Hey guys, how are you? Facebook Live, uh, Facebook Friends and Family. This is Intuitive Heart Radio. I'm Abigail, uh, host of Intuitive Radio, uh, Heart Radio, coming to you live from, as you can see, sunny Burbank, uh, California. And uh, I'm going to be talking today about um, the arrests that have been made recently in the Lorenzen Wright uh, murder investigation. Uh, it looks like this has been solved. What we're going to talk about today, hey Lou, how are you? Um, Marissa, how are you? Thanks you guys for joining. So much love to you. Uh, what, what I'm going to talk about today as well, well, a, 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 a bunch of different things really. Um, man, let me just breathe uh, for a moment and just tap into how it feels. Huh, I, I've been tearful, um, more than tearful really. I woke up to a barrage of, uh, of texts and messages from people letting me know that Shara uh, Lorenzen writes ex-wife had been arrested and um, my heart has been waiting for that for a long time not nearly uh, not nearly has it been as hard for me as it has been for the family so moving forward today uh, as I share this please know that everything I say uh, is in is is in a, just a smaller measure than what uh, Lorenzen's close friends and family have had to endure over the last seven years because uh, we've known for some time that Shara was the mastermind behind this, the one who set her husband, NBA star Lorenzen Wright. Uh, not just an NBA star, this was, he was, um, he, he, he was a husband, uh, he was a father, he was a friend, he was a great father, he loved dogs, and um, that's where I want to start today. Uh, but for anyone joining today who doesn't know, uh, it's called Intuitive Heart Radio because I, I really do my best. I, I, I grew up psychic. Um, I didn't really understand what that was. My father was an atheist, so I wasn't raised in the book or the box. I just know since my earliest memories, before I had words, I would see people who were obviously not alive. Uh, it used to scare the, the heck out of me when I was little, and the person, the spirit that would come to me and comfort me is the one that we know as, as Jesus Christ. I've always known him, and I've always known his name. As I got older in life, I used to ask my father, who was a brilliant-minded atheist, um, I used to ask him, if, if Jesus is just a man and there is no heaven or hell, why have I always known who he was? My heart knew him before before I understood anything else. So um, the first, first thing I want to do today is is, uh, is thank God, thank Christ Yeshua, Jesus Christ, uh, and thank Father God Abba uh for uh for justice in the case for Lorenzen Wright. Uh being what the world calls a psychic and and, and I will spend as, as long as God gives me on the planet doing my best to redefine the way we have defined psychic. Being psychic was never for walking around a room talking to dead people. Um we were always meant to be in communication with heaven. We were meant to pair free will and free choice which we asked for and a loving God granted us. Um, I, I hear the voice of who I call Abba, Father God. I've known that name since I was two and a half years old and I just want to share because he's bringing it through. Um, something that was funny, I asked about free will and free choice one time. I wanted to understand it better and the first thing I heard from, from my father, your father, our father, because we are all one in Jesus Christ, blood and sacrifice and in God's love, Father God's love, we are all one. And loved equally and the same without judgment in a way that none of us can even understand in 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 our current human state um, but what he said to me was he said sweetheart he said I, I, I love you all dearly and there isn't anything I wouldn't want to do for any one of you he said but when you asked for free will he said I told you all it was a bad idea <laughs> and uh, and he said and it has proven so <laughs> um, and so it's it's very hard for God to watch any of us uh, suffer and and then one more thing that I, I want to say about that so please um, thanking God and know please know how much you're loved uh, as we move forward in the broadcast and please understand that you can ask God if, if what I say today in this broadcast is true God will tell you God never would never choose certain children to speak to and not the rest he speaks to all of us it is our own beliefs and our fears uh, 
our own beliefs and our fears that keep us from psychically hearing, which is divine guidance. We are all psychic. Psychic is a scientific state of being, and God gave us all the same equipment. We are all hardwired. It is our innate, natural spirit and way of being. It's, it's our, his voice is our heart song. So please know that as you move through this and don't take anything from me or anybody else you hear, you start asking for that wisdom and divine guidance. You lovingly demand that God tell you what is true in your life and start seeing yourself through God's eyes and not your own and other people as well. Find forgiveness for, for people in your life and, uh, and you'll start to see how great you really are. It's how it works. Um, with that said, you can learn more about who I am uh, at, at abigailnoel.com my website and if you have messaged me or you would like a session love and honor to you I work as a ministry people say what do you charge from your heart whatever you can afford just please keep in mind what you pay for your hair and your nails and your last purse okay just place an importance on it but I, I don't I don't do credit checks background checks check financial I don't care what you say you can give is fine uh, you go to my website and go to schedule a session right now my days are very limited um, I'm gonna do my best to increase that that time I've really I uh, had to cut back and take care of myself and not do so much one-on-one -on -one work it's it's really hard because you know anyone who knows it's you, you're holding a lot of space for people and it gets tough I don't like to feel like I'm letting people down none of us do uh, so remember you're not here to save the world you're here to have an experience and come closer to God <clears throat> we're all here to learn how, how God loves um, and that's it that's it so everyone uh, thank you for being here today again it's intuitive heart radio I'm Abigail Noel for more about me please go to my website n o e l Abigail Noel dot com um, I said Noel my last name so Merry Christmas as well you guys and it feels like Christmas has come early this year gosh I, I moved the chair and let me let me sit in a way it won't keep banging around uh, Christmas has come early today I my mom bought me these stockings uh, like you know uh, tights with Santa's on him and and reindeer and I, I almost put them on today um, but it's it's too darn hot and sunny and and beautiful here today actually it's about 70 getting on 75 degrees um, here in sunny Burbank and again it, even with the Sun out the warmth I know it's not quite Christmas but it's Christmas to me um, I imagine uh, it's even more so for the family of Lorenz and Wright so um, I have worked as an intuitive therapist I love you guys thank you for being here Hey Brandy, how are you, baby? Hey Daisy, uh, I've worked as an intuitive therapist. That's the title that God, Abba, asked me to use. Because uh, people say, "Well, why don't you tell people you're a psychic?" Because we're all psychic. Um, why do I know that? I know that because number one, God told me, and and that's you only know what you didn't know. And number two, because I, I the experience is is our is our only true teacher, and I've experienced and watched people learn how to and remember. It's all we're here to do. You already know how to talk to God. You've got to remember. Um, and so I've watched people become psychic and hear God for the for the purpose it was intended. So that because God's going to challenge you to your fears. And, and so to, to do that, you've got to be able to stand on your rock and, and develop that trust and faith, the only place of true peace. Well, how do you do that? You do that by learning to trust this, this beautiful voice that guides you to places in your life that you never thought you would go this voice is going to tell you that you are better than you thought you were so much better that you can't comprehend this voice is going to challenge you to things that scare the hell out of you um, but you're going to have the confidence and the faith just this little bit of, of trust that's what they mean by the mustard seed when you know that God's behind you there is nothing that you can't do and that's truth I've witnessed it now is God going to put you through the through the through tests absolutely he puts his strongest and the ones who love him the most through the most tests look at the book look at Job look at Job and look at so many others but Job we all take as much of a measure we want to be like Job we want to be in that place where we say darn it I know I'm standing on my rock and I will not get mad at my God and I know he's got me in this place for a reason and I know that reason is for good and I know that that good will come up and I know I'm strong enough to take on these tests with that said and, and again I'm just gonna say it one more time I'm not comparing the test that I took to family members to having to be the sister or the mother or the brother or the child of somebody who just lost their father and to know in the back of your mind some some so a lot of people have known even the cops knew in the back of their mind that someone's responsible someone you've got to look at every day and wonder um, I can't even imagine so I'm not gonna compare that I'm, I'm gonna go from from a 
a different way, a broader way. Somebody who, who was asked to trust, who was asked to trust. Back in 2010, the soul essence or the spirit of Lorenzen Wright, NBA star, but more than that, loving father, brother, son, He came to me, um, I didn't watch the news or anything at that time, and, and I didn't, all I knew is that there, uh, through Facebook, that's been my news station for a long time now, about 11 or 12 years, if it doesn't come through my news feed or someone messages me, I just leave it alone, I'm happier that way. But I did know because I lived in Memphis, Tennessee at the time, I'm from originally from California, where I was born and raised, but I'd been in Memphis back then, I think about six or seven years and I knew that there was a local star, NBA basketball star, who played for the Grizzlies that was dis that had disappeared. I had already felt that he he had passed, but it really didn't feel like my business. So I, I went on about my business. At that time in my life, I was interning at the Heart Center, H A R T, there in Memphis, Tennessee. I was I was learning to work with God as a healer, as an intuitive therapist, which is what I've done now, uh, in, in private practice for nine, going on ten years. I'm very honored to say um, it's been hard, but um, the best things in life are, are difficult, are, are a challenge as well. And it's, so it's been an amazing experience. Uh, thank you, Memphis, for all the support and, and, and all of my clients all over who are watching today. I love you guys. I love you guys. You're some of the bravest people on the planet. That's true. Um, so with that said, the spirit and soul essence of Lorenzen Wright made himself very known to me the day his body was found. Um, and that's where my journey begins. Uh, from there, I realized that I actually went to aesthetic school with a, a woman he was dating um, at the time, and that's how God works. All of a sudden, these synchronicities, because there's no such thing as coincidence, start popping up. So I got a hold of her because I needed somebody, and I didn't know him. I didn't know his anyone in his family, um, didn't really know where to go, uh, but I knew God was going to make it work. I was able to get a hold of her and uh, we met, um, we met at the Heart Center and through her I was able to um, uh, establish my own trust with the information that I was hearing because she was able to validate some things that I never could have known and that is the way spirit will work again with any of us. All you have to do is hold that loving, have a loving space and know that you can hear God speak to you. Now guys. Um, it's gonna drive me nuts. Let me just scoop my butt over here and keep it over there and work with physics a little bit. Um, anyway, with that said, um, it, it, it does take practice. Learn remembering how to hear God is like learning to play the guitar. Um, and so you know, and and how do you get good? You practice every day. You know, even even if your fingers bleed, even if you get calluses, you, you also have to sacrifice um, to, to get to that place. What does God require to, as far as being psychic and to hear? Um, number one, a tried and true heart. Uh, you've got to be as objective as you as you can be. Um, you've got to expect to get your, your butt kicked. Um, that's what I'll tell you there uh, because truth hurts sometimes and I got to hear it too about myself. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna be objective enough to listen and and hear it correctly for others and the biggest thing I would say is that God works magic and miracles through our bravery our biggest responsibility here on the planet is to speak truth to not lie God does not he, he loves he loves the most imperfect of all of us and he doesn't care about about most of the things that we all sit around and judge what God despises is a liar a manipulator and a cheat that's what God despises and we got a lot of liars in this case um, one of them two of them now are behind bars the biggest one Shara Lorenzen Wright's ex-wife uh, is behind bars today and I'm so excited so um, the spirit of Lorenzen Wright came to me the day that his body I became aware of his presence in in my life and that it was my uh, responsibility that God was asking me to speak with him. Lorenzen was already with uh, the one that we call Jesus Christ. His Hebrew name was was Yeshua. Lorenzen was already with him spiritually. For my my first duty and responsibility, when any soul crosses who's who's well known, not well known, John Doe, it doesn't matter, is to make sure that they get with with Jesus Christ. Is that they have? Uh, I call him Jay from here forward. That's because he asked me to, um, and it is true. Um, that's 
he is he is the last bridge that we all have to take to get back home into what we know or Christianity calls heaven. It has many names, many names. And in fact, Father God Abba pr prefers Nevaya, which is its true name, not heaven. We have so many things asked backwards, he says, down here on earth, including the name for heaven. The name is Nevaya. Um, and yes, Jay's name is Yeshua. Uh, with that said, uh, to get back home, he is the last bridge. After I checked to make sure that Lorenzen was with was with Yeshua, uh, they began explaining to me that it was my job to work with Ren, uh, and I understand this. It's, you work with somebody who he was depressed, he was in shock, he wasn't. He was so angry about the betrayal that it just happened to his life. He kept telling me that bitch, that bitch. I said, what bitch? And he showed me a wedding ring. And I came to understand rather quickly that he met his wife. That was the first person that Lorenzen Wright's soul essence implicated. Um, the way that God works. Um, and again, reminding you, it's, you know, get with your gatekeeper. You, you, anyone can get with Jesus. You just tell him, hey, D Jesus, I'm, re I'm ready to work with you as my gatekeeper. I'm ready to receive guidance. Now, you got to be ready to change or he or he's, you know, he's just going to sit back and kind of kind of kind of chuckle till you till you are um you know a lot of people say i can't hear him i can't hear him well well are you ready to change ask yourself that are you really ready to be brave um and are you challenging yourself in forgiveness in all areas of your life you do that and i guarantee then you will be psychic too and this is where we are going these are the times of revelation i was told this morning that lorenzen wright's case is just the first of many many revelations that are going to hit the planet it's just going to get bigger and bigger and i'm i think it's so beautiful that god used lorenzen right as someone to start opening that floodgate he is putting oh man you guys he's opening the floodgate of truth and this is revelation we are going to have 22 glorious years of change and truth when a new world will be established what that means is when everyone on the planet knows that they can hear god too then guess think about it think about it shara could never have done what she did She'd be like, oh man, I, just, I can't, I can't have my husband shot and collect all that money now. Damn it. I can't do it right now and try and make it look like he got himself into this mess because of this and that and blame it on Bob. Oh, don't, Bobby Cole. I can't do it because there's too many people talking to God on the planet. Won't that be heaven on earth when no one can lie and no one can, no one can kill somebody and shoot somebody and manipulate somebody and abuse somebody and rape somebody. Won't that be beautiful when we don't need any dumbass Me Too fucking campaigns? It isn't just about you, girls. It ain't about you, girls. All this shit affects the boys just as much, all of it. Jealousy, manipulation, abuse, physical. This He was abused by his wife. Let's get to the truth. He was abused by his wife. I'm not going to for, for a second and no one, anyone that knows Lorenzen, no one's going to sit here and tell, we're not going to tell you he was a perfect person. But I, just like Jay said, you better keep your stones and your nuts in your pocket. Don't you cast a stone. Don't you cast a stone, anybody watching this, because none of you are perfect. And only by God's grace are you loved, but thank God we all are. But I will tell you this, Lorenzen Wright wouldn't have hurt anybody. He would have never, ever he had too much love for himself, for his friends, for his family. He had too much love for his children. He would have never, even with what he endured, what that bitch was putting him through. And why do I know what that bitch was putting him through? This is why. This is why. The same way I knew that Big Bill, Big Bill, that he'd be from Mississippi, that both shooters are from Mississippi, Greg Lewis, we're coming for you. We're coming for you, Gregory Lewis. And what happened to your daughter, Myra? And FBI, I won't stop. I will not stop. And now you guys know I won't. I haven't stopped in seven years. And I haven't stopped yelling for Desmond Moore. I spoke to his mama today. And guess what, Mr. Wilson? Because I won't call you captain. Until you do your job, you don't deserve a title. Mr. Wilson, down there in the Gulf, you will solve that case for Desmond Moore. And you will go after Marco. You will go get those two white boys. You hear me, sir? 
Mr. Wilson, I'm coming for you next. FBI, you tell me now why that pearl-colored Cadillac Escalade was taken, confiscated with no registration from Greg Lewis's property, and tell me why you were already investigating him with drug connections. You tell me what I already know because he knows Bobby Cole. And let's talk about it because he's the other shooter. Give it up, Billy, Big Bill Turner. Same reason I knew, because God told me. That's why. Humbly, I speak it. I don't know why God would speak to someone as imperfect as me, but thank God he does. And the good news is it means that if he will talk to me, because believe me, believe me, perfect I'm not, then he will talk to you too. As you're listening to this broadcast, you just ask if what I'm saying is not true. You ask God to loving, you lovingly demand that God tell you it's true. Shara, you better start singing. She's going to sing. She's going to sing because she is a coward. That's what cowards do. And Lorenzen Wright was no coward. And he would have never done to you, Shara, what you did to him. Oh, my God. You want to talk abuse? This woman abused him. She manipulated men with her sexual prowess. She grabbed onto Lorenzen when he was barely, I don't even think, 15. She was just old enough. And just old enough, older enough to know exactly what to do. She saw a star on the rise. She had as many children as she could because every one of those kids represented dollars, dollars, and dollars. Infinite love and gratitude. You didn't ride that wave long, did you, Miss Mrs. Lorenzen, right? Infinite love and gratitude. Now she's going to write her second book. Guess what, Sharon? No one's going to buy your books. You're a joke now. Your books are a joke. They're going to go down in history in a whole different way. You're going down as a liar and a murderer. And you were trying to make money off books. You became a minister to soothe your guilt, to try and justify your crime. Seven years ago when Lorenz and Wright came, I was terrified. I was terrified because we're going to get to this Dennis McNeil. I'm not terrified anymore. And I'm coming back to Memphis and I will walk in plain daylight. Infinite love and gratitude. You better start singing, sir. You better start singing. You went in a dirty cop. You're married to Bobby Cole's sister. <sighs> I'm not terrified anymore. Thank you, Lorenz and Wright. I was so scared. <laughs> My children were scared. They were mad at me. I'm calling out cops. <sighs> and then it was funny. It was the, saddest, you know, hard, the hardest part was when I realized no one cares. I'm just a crazy psychic. No one's listening, Abigail. <sighs> They're laughing at you. <laughs> My father, your father, Abba, told me that Lorenzo Wright would see justice. He told me to look at a mother and a sister in the eye and tell them that, he, that God promises justice. And I don't do that unless God says none of us have the power or authority to promise shit to anybody. That's why you go up there and take your wedding vows. It's a joke, joke, joke. You can't promise somebody you're going to love them the way they want you to forever. Love and sex aren't the same thing. People wake up. Infinite love and gratitude. So what I know is that God promised me because only God could bring justice for Lorenzo. And I kept thinking there was something I had to do in all these seven years. It would run through my mind. And we all do this. We all think it's something I can do. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to make it happen. I got to, 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 I got to. You don't got to do nothing. You don't got to do nothing but forgive in your life. And, and recognize your power and work on your emotions. Get rid of worry, anxiety, shame, blame, resentment, guilt, and start talking to God. Start taking brave steps in your life. Face your fear. And when you know, when you know you're holding the truth, you start speaking it. And you don't care what anybody says. And I'm proud. I'm proud of me today. I'm very proud of me today. It was really scary. And then it was hard to find out that nobody seemed to care. I spent three and a half hours talking to Larry God when he was the police chief. He's now in charge of Homeland Security. I believe he still is for the state of Tennessee. I'm not going to make him a bad guy. I appreciate that he came out to meet with me. But really, were you the police chief and you didn't know Dennis McNeil was a dirty cop? 
You didn't know when Tim McGreen was his best buddy, they went into the academy together? Well, God told me that Dennis McNeil, see, God... God will tell you, but place, he places the burden, okay? So the first, the person with the most burden for Lorenzen Wright's murder is Shara Wright. And she is now in jail, thank God. The second person I was shown, I was shown Dennis McNeil, you still, you're still working for the Memphis City Police Department. This is crazy. I had a TBI agent. He was vetting me for three hours. He was embarrassing me, grilling me over my past, bringing up a DUI from when I was 24, trying to embarrass me, treated me like a dumb, crazy psychic. They wouldn't even listen to me, but you were vetted and they allowed you. You're married to Bobby Cole, the biggest drug retailers in Memphis, the biggest in Memphis. He's incarcerated for it. You're married to his sister and your one of your best fucking friends, Tim Green, was indicted and incarcerated for being dirty and giving inside information to Bobby Cole. You guys were both drug enforcement agents and you still work for the force and I had to sit for three hours. Larry Godwin, Mr. Godwin, I don't give a fuck what your title is. You know exactly what happened to Lorenzen and you were making sure I got nowhere. Why do I know it? Because I, the same way, because God told me, sir, the same way I knew that Big Bill, who would be from Mississippi and that's where the gun would be found, was one of the shooters in this case. You met with me to monitor, sir because dirty cops were involved, and I'm so naive, I told you all of it. I told you all of it. I'm so dumb. I said, did you know Dennis McNeil? Oh, did he know? Of course he knew! People are like, man, she gets so mad. Yes! I know it's true, and these people get paid by your tax dollars. You should be mad, too. We should all be mad. We should all be in Nashville. You know why it took seven years? And it's okay, because God's going to make a bigger thing, because this is what I know. I said, Daddy, why did it have to take seven years? Why? Why? Because what he does is see every bit of suffering and sacrifice. So every bit of suffering and sacrifice that Lorenzen's family, every ounce of pain that, that his mama and his family felt, that his children have felt, every ounce of pain, God has that recorded. Tick, tick, tick. He's recording it, and he's feeling it, and he's going to use it. He's going to use it to do more than just put in jail a couple of thugs and a, and a bitch who manipulated and, and literally, you want to talk abused and abused a husband and a father. You want to get love, Shara? It's not how you do it. Love isn't money. Love isn't constantly demanding. Love isn't jealous. Love is kind. Love is patient. You knew. Infinite love and gratitude. So God is going to use it. He, he waited seven years because he wasn't going to let this, he wasn't going to let it be swept under the rug with a couple of fall guys. He's going to make sure the entire Memphis City Police Department comes apart at the fucking seams. That's what he's going to do. And, and, and I was told today, I was told today, and we're going to, uh, we're, we're going to raise some funds. I want to thank Thaddeus Matthews, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Full chills. Hi, Honor. Uh, he's been helping um, uh, Miss Deborah out, Lorenzen's mom, who's been living in a hell that, thank God, most of us will never know for almost eight years. And what I will tell you is, emotionally, it's been hard for me. Imagine emotionally how hard it's been for her. And just recently, I came to the end of the, my rope. It's been hard for me to work anymore. And so can you imagine how hard it's been for her to hold her shit together, her life, her job. So Deborah has been in some financial trouble as many of us have been lately. Many of us have been having trouble and that's a whole nother show. It's because we have a, we have a government that needs to go. And I mean yesterday, but that's vote Mickey Mouse guys, vote Mickey Mouse. Um, so we're going to fire those motherfuckers and, and take care of ourselves is what we're going to do here shortly. 
But with that said, um, uh, we're gonna we're gonna do another a, a little fundraiser for Deborah Marion, and um, I don't know when at this point, but that'll be coming up. Um, I want to do something there too, and thank Thaddy. I'm thanking Thaddeus uh, uh, for Matthews for raising. Gosh, I think like six, seven thousand dollars to help her out the other day. So um, I don't know if we'll be able to do that much, but we, I want to send a gift over for Christmas as well. I was inspired to do that this morning. Um, it also um, it didn't it didn't occur to me. Uh, God gave it to me, and and it's not often that that God gives me this type of of message, um, but. Uh, when when this when this unravels the family, um, let, let's let me just say it this way: um, the city of Memphis, you didn't you didn't do anything. You, you gave put up five thousand dollars. You already knew who who did this. Five thousand lousy dollars. Lorenzen brought way more than that. You, he was. <sighs> You can't put a dollar sign on a human life, but he was worth way more than that city of Memphis. And I'm, I don't, I'm not even going to apologize. Fuck you, city of Memphis. That's what I had to say to you, mayor's office in Memphis Grizzlies. The Memphis Grizzlies put up a lousy $5,000 as well for Lorenzen. Do you know in those entire seven years, all, the only money that was raised was, was, was 21 lousy thousand dollars? Infinite love and gratitude. But 21's my lucky number, so guess what? And Philip Um the, the family needs to go after the city. The Memphis City Police Department needs to be sued. And I would personally go after Larry Godwin and get to the bottom of this infinite love and gratitude. Am I scared to go back to Memphis? No, I am not. <sighs> infinite love and gratitude. Not, not, no, I am not. <laughs> I love this new fire. So where do I want to go now? I want to go there. I want to go to the NBA. The Memphis Grizzlies, in particular in the city of Memphis, you're despicable. You're absolutely despicable. And I want to go to any person that thinks they're going to throw any bit of judgment, any bit of judgment, okay, that you want to talk about. I don't, I don't, and I've said this before, but you want to talk about anybody in the NBA that's not smoking some pot and snorting some coke. Don't you dare. And you guys, because you didn't want to blacken your name, darken your name, get involved, you, you just, oh my God, you just took his reputation. You took who he is. You know, I know I didn't watch basketball, but he was my grandmother's, one of my grandmother's favorite players. Her two favorite players were Spud Webb and Lorenzen Wright. My grandmother loved basketball. She watched it for like 20 years or something like that before she died. She never missed a game. If my grandmother says that Lorenzen Wright was one of the best players in the NBA, then he was. Chills. So God agrees. How dare you? And look at all the teams that he played for. The Clippers, the Cavaliers, the Hawks, the Grizzlies. And you guys gave nothing. Nothing to help solve this case. You bring these kids in. You make millions off of him. How much money did you make off Lorenzen Wright? And what did you do to help? Did you ever and do you ever give them any counseling? Do you ever help them financially? Do you give them any guidance? No, you rape them. You throw them on the court. Fucking managers, you make way more than you ever should. The people who own these teams are some of the most despicable, nasty, foul, deceitful, devious, lying assholes on the planet. You cannot bring people, kids, in, especially when they have come from places, places of nothing, places where some people would never even understand. And you cannot make them stars, tell them they're phenomenal, give them a bunch of money, and have, expect them to just know how to live up to that. Lorenzen would tell me all the time from the other side, he would say, I was given so much and it was just basketball. I just, I just, I just, it was just basketball. He thought other people should have as much. He didn't feel like he should be given so much for just playing basketball that it ate him up. And so he tried to give it all away. <laughs> I 
I said I was gonna keep my cool, but I guess not. Ah. My thoughts right now, I, I just let my, my mind flow, my heart wander to the emotion, anger for that book Shara wrote. That was not Lorenzen Wright. He was not the abuser she was. And that's why this hashtag Me Too campaign can go fucking suck a nut. <laughs> that felt good to say, so there you go. Men don't have a voice. It's what we've done. We've babied the girls until men don't have a voice. Lorenzen Wright was abused by his wife. He thought he got away, but she kept pushing him, squeezing him, squeezing him. You better get me this money. She was mad because he was getting serious with this girl in Atlanta. He really, really cared about, I believe. That's what I feel. That's what I heard. And he was seeing somebody new in Memphis. He didn't even want to come out to Memphis. He was leaving all that behind. He'd taken a job as a manager. He wanted to do more work with kids and make a difference. He wanted to use his NBA career and his fame to do good for others. He loved dogs. You're a liar, Sarah. You're a liar. Your books are fabricated to make yourself feel better and justify what you did. I believe everybody should write the NBA and tell them what assholes they are. You find your words, everybody. You write, you write the Grizzlies, all of them. Write the Cavaliers, write the Clippers, all of them, all of them. Write the NBA execs. You tell them they have more of a responsibility if they're going to use these kids, if they're going to bring them up and make them stars. They have a bigger responsibility. It is high time we stop letting money run the world. It is high time we start taking responsibility. When things are given, we have a responsibility. And the NBA had a responsibility to do more for Lorenzen Wright than they did. The Grizzlies had a very large responsibility, and you failed Lorenzen Wright miserably. The Memphis City De Police Department is, is, is in absolute disgust and a disgrace. You failed him miserably, and so did the city and the mayor's seat. The only people that did not fail Lorenzen are the people. The, the people of the city and it is it is time the people by the people for the people take over in every way in Memphis and in every city across the country and definitely with this fucked up government we are currently because that's where it all trickles down we've got more dirty cops on the street and we all know it infinite love and gratitude isn't it funny everyone can bitch about black lives matter and we turn that into some sort of patriotic non-patriotic whatever when we all know when we all know the stats are there, okay, and people with more melanin are definitely still racially oppressed. So let's all, and there, and more are targeted by law enforcement, for God's sakes. Infinite love and gratitude. Um, but, but nobody complains about Me Too. Just, yay, Me Too! Everybody get behind it! Yay! Poor. <laughs> and it's mostly a bunch of fucking white girls bitching. Infinite love and gratitude. All right. Uh, by the way, anyone just joining uh, for Lorenzen, I'm, I'm Abigail. This is Intuitive Heart Radio, and I speak my, my mind. Where, wherever it flows, I go. Um, infinite love and gratitude. Uh, God, God doesn't speak a language, so let me say that. If, if anyone watching has any judgment for my language, I'm going to say it again. Uh, God doesn't, and that I'm sure of. Uh, God only, it's intention is what God judges, and God hates liars, manipulators, and thieves. And thank God, by his grace, I am none of those three. Uh, imperfect I am and an asshole. <laughs> Very difficult to live with, that's for sure. Uh, as, I, as I'm 48 going on 49, I understand why they, the angels have kept me single, um, for sure, and I'm good with that. Um, you guys, let's see where else do we go. I am going um, to come live uh, in, in the future and, and take phone calls. 
it wasn't on my heart to, to do that today. I, I think I wanted to get a lot of this up and out. Let's see, we've, we've covered um, Dennis McNeil, who's friends with Tim McGreen, Tim, Tim, uh, Tim McGreen, Tim Green. Um, they were buddies. They went into the um, academy together to be in drug enforcement, specifically when um, when Dennis was already married to, to Bobby Cole, the biggest uh, dr drug re retailer in Memphis, connected to Craig Pettis, uh, when, when he was already married to his sister. So again, I I'd, I'd like to know from the Memphis City Police Department like what, what kind of vetting they do, because they checked my background for three in hours with some smug ass TBI agent who wasn't gonna do anything. You know what he told me? He told me if I could get him license plates and like full names and addresses that he would work on the case. And I looked at him and I said, what, what do you do? If I solve the case, like what do you do? And he, and he thought I was a smart ass. Well, guess what? If you're watching this broadcast today, fuck you. Infinite love and gratitude, Mr. TBI agent. Um, they failed miserably, and I'm going to say it again. The family, uh, I, I would have an attorney. I'd be suing the Memphis City Police Department so fast. Get it ready now. Get it ready now. Um, this is also uh, out of the Evelyn News. When, when, um, when, so we had an arrest made. It's, it's a uh, Bill out, Bill uh, Turner, Bill Ray, and also I was reminded by by somebody um, uh, uh, cl close to the family uh, that not only had I said uh, Big Bill, but I said I said Br Br. I said, Bill, Bill Ray, B, B R, Billy Ray. I said he would be from Mississippi. Both shooters are. I believe the second shooter will be Greg Lewis, who also lives around Oxford, Mississippi, just down the road a few miles from Bobby Cole's wife. Uh, let's remember, God doesn't, he works in synchronicities. There's no such thing as coincidence. God makes synchronicities happen. So we know that we're right. Um, and so with that said, Greg Lewis has known drug uh, connections and, 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 and a record. I was also shown that one of the shooters would work with, auto, with automobiles, with cars. It's my understanding uh, Greg Lewis has in the past, if he doesn't still as well. Um, going back to this, uh, uh, Billy Turner was arrested. Um, and uh, the gun was found in Mississippi. There's a second gun as well. Um, it was in a shoebox up in a closet in Greg Lewis's house with the Nike bag. If he's watched this, and I think he has, it may not be there anymore, but that's okay. This whole thing is unraveling, so oh well. Um, with that said, uh, when Billy Turner pleaded not guilty, um, I had a lot of fear come up. I thought, Oh man, we're gonna wait seven more years. They're gonna let him off. We're gonna have to wait for someone else to get busted, to use what they know, you know. And um, and I was talking to God about it, and uh, right away he said no. He only pleaded guilty because he's making deals, and that was all validated by somebody who's um, very close to the family, who's right there with this process, who is celebrating with the family today. And he said, because I called him and I, I said, oh man, I said, are we gonna have to wait longer? Are they gonna let this fucker go? And he said, no, Abigail, <laughs> and he validated everything I just heard. Um, again, um, it's to the best of my interpretation and understanding as I was working with uh, with Father God with Abba this morning is that the reason this took, had to take so long is because he wants it to be bigger than just two damn shooters, you know, two thugs and a, and a, and a bitter wife. Um, he wants to bring down all of it. He wants to bring down... Uh, these these damn liars that are in the Memphis City Police Department. It's uh, it's not okay. Um, it's not okay, and so um, he's going to use Lorenzen's sacrifice uh, to to do something bigger and to bring more truth uh, to a city that deserves it. So we deserve a clean clean, a clean police department. That's what we deserve. The city deserves. I say we. Uh, I live in Memphis part time. I'll, I'll be. I'll be back up there soon. I shouldn't tell anybody that. <laughs> but love and gratitude. I have to get a different phone or some shit under an assumed name. <laughs> um, actually, I, I just trust that, that God's going to have some of these folks behind bars, and I'm not going to have to worry about anything. I'll be singing zippity doo dah, zippity zippity a. My oh my, what a fine fine day. Plenty of sunshine coming our way zippity doo da zippity a uh, so seven years ago i was told that god wouldn't ask me to to do this he wouldn't ask me to call out memphis city police to you know officers and 
um, and to do all this if he wasn't going to bring justice for Lorenz and Wright, and uh, that's happened. And what I'll say is that this is, this is we still have another shooter. They know that. They know that, so so someone's going to have to to start talking and give up that other name. Again, I believe that's going to be Greg Lewis, who also lives uh, near Oxford, Mississippi, if not in Oxford. Uh, let's not forget that the pearl-colored Cadillac Escalade that I was told the two shooters drove and showed up in that night. I saw it in my mind's eyes, just as I saw Lorenz and Wright being shot in the face. Before the autopsy ever revealed, he was shot in the hand, his left hand. That's in the autopsy. And it was all, it was in the police report. And I had made that public. I made that public because this shooter was jealous. What are you going to do now, pretty boy? Motherfucker, pretty boy, bitch. What you going to do now, basketball star? What you going to do now? I'm going to fuck up your face. Your mama won't see your face again, pretty boy. This is Greg Lewis. That wasn't Bill Turner. Bill Turner didn't really want to be there at that point, but he was in too far. And he was afraid if he tried to turn, get out, it was going to be him that got capped next. End of story. He knew how many people were involved. And let's not forget, it was Shara's idea to get Ren involved in these drugs. She put so much pressure on him about that fucking money. 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 Let's all talk about how much she got each month. You can't raise your kids on what you were getting. You can't, you can't raise your kids on what he was giving you. What? I'm going to do my best from here forward to stop getting so mad at her. I can't make any promises though. Oh, I can't make any promises. It's my judgment, but I can't stand women like her. You know, there's part, I think, of any of us that would say, like, oh, God, what about these kids? You know, their father's murdered. Now they have to find out their mother did it. You know, even even if they even if they didn't know before, at least they kind of had their mother, right? Right? No. It's hard. It is hard. Sometimes God will make you walk on glass through fire, places you never thought you'd want to go. You will be so cold and so hungry. You will think it is the end. But the truth is always better because it is only the truth that shall set you free. And they told me that literally this is going to save those kids because they all knew somewhere in their heart exactly what their mother did. They've heard the pss, 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 and they've got the memories in that subconscious mind. And I know because I've been working with people in their subconscious minds, helping with traumas for the last going on 11 years. And what I know is as they get older, that's going to get triggered and it's going to bubble up and it's going to come out. So really what this is saving is, is, is a far uglier event in the future. Because uh, when, one of, when, when let's say one of, one of Lorenzen's you know, children find out and really know in their lives that their mother did this to their father, and what it was really all about, jealousy and money and manipulation. Because you were mad, Shara. Because he wasn't going to love you. You weren't going to be his queen. Maybe you should have acted like a queen. Full chills. Maybe you should have acted like a queen if you wanted to be loved by a king. Is there anything else I want to say today? Uh, I want to, I just thanking God, uh, thanking Lorenz and Wright for his sacrifice and his role. This is awakening so many hearts. This is going to awaken hearts to know they can talk to God as well. This is, this is making more change than my human brain could probably grasp. And I, I thank him. All glory goes to God and, and, and Jay. If love and gratitude, I had a Baptist woman ask me, I don't mean to say a Baptist woman, but someone who was very uh, fundamentally Baptist, uh, she was in a session with me one time, and I didn't understand why she was asking me. As I said, I'm kind of naive. I can be a real asshole, but I'm kind of naive. That's what it takes to hear God. you got to know you don't know. And so uh, I'm kind of like an angry eight-year-old child most of the time. <laughs> That's why I say it's probably better I live alone. Um, uh, with that said, um, I was in a session with this woman way back. This was years ago. And I don't understand religion very much. What I know, I truly know through my channel. My, my father was an atheist. You know, I think like like a lot of us. So I didn't grow, I did not grow up in the book of the box. But like all of us, you know, you'll have friends that are like, and they're always trying to save you. So I had those friends that were like, our dad's an atheist. We got to get her to church. You know, we got to save her. 
So, and I, but I always talk to Jay. So one time it was really funny because I had this girl tell me, she's like, you have to like declare your love to Jesus or you're going to whatever, whatever. I said, but, but I, but I, I talked to him all the time and she was like, no, but you have to do it like this. I really believed her for a minute. I thought I was talking to him all wrong. I thought she knew something I didn't know. <laughs> True story. I didn't realize I was psychic until I was like 15 or 16 years old. I saw John Edward had a television show talking to dead people. It was, a, it was the first time I got mad at God. I said, what? What? You gave him a TV show. I might have been a little older, but I was like, what, why didn't I get a show? I was so hurt. Then I wondered for I was like, oh God, I see I am just jacked up. I thought Jesus was with me uh, for years because I thought they, I was like a problem case. I swear to God. I thought he just hung out with the people that really needed help. <laughs> and that is true too, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> anyway, let me get back on track. What do I want to say in closing today? Um, please know you're all psychic. I've been watching people wake up to their guidance. And, um, you know, please, I, I, I don't want to say I don't have followers. You have to be a follower to have followers. But please join me here regularly on Facebook. Uh, don't follow me. I like I like friends. That's why I'm kind of bummed. I'm at the 5,000 limit. I think that's ridiculous. Facebook, you jerks. Um, I don't. I don't. Cause I don't. Again, I don't want followers. Um, if I haven't gotten back to you, please know that I will. It's gonna take me some time, and I, I humbly just say thank you for reaching out. And and please, if I don't respond, it is not because I am not appreciative of your words and or many of you would like sessions and to try sessions and I'm. Um, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get to you, I promise. But if you haven't heard from me and you want a session, just go to abigailnoel.com. You're going to go to schedule a session page, all right? And there's a calendar there. Again, the times are limited, but please just try and find a time. I think it's just Tuesdays and Thursdays right now that, that works for you, okay? Even if it's a 30-minute check-in and we go from there, um, I work as a ministry, which why there's a donate button, okay? My sessions are regularly six sixty five, but if if you can't afford that right now, which by the way is is like three or four times below what what people charge, um, and and I don't I don't care. That's where it's going to stay. I like that number sixty five vibrates in an eleven. Eleven is Father God's number. It's the number He told me to keep it at. And see, it's not about about uh, about the the money. And when you make it that way, God takes care of you, and He truly does. I live a pretty extraordinary life. It's hard, but it's extraordinary. Um, with that said, I help people um, with psychological re-imprinting. Um, we go back and we work with uh, with lower vibrational energy dramas and traumas that are still working against us, our subconscious. We don't even know if some of these things are there. Okay. After that, towards the end of the session, then yes, God's going to give you these beautiful nuggets of information about what you're truly here to do. And then they're going to challenge you okay, to, to do something. Okay, because God, God loves to give us gifts, but he's going to ask us to, to do something that feeds our soul. And it's, it's, sometimes it's funny. Sometimes, a lot, oftentimes it's scary. Sometimes you, you, it's working on forgiveness for somebody, okay? And then that's, you know, what we do. We work with the emotions and the sessions with me. And then, yes, we do go back. Sometimes past life information comes through. And then we do what we, what, what's called harmonizing, okay? Alchemizing. We alchemize um, your, your, your real future. Okay, and the past, we find purpose and pain in the past. Anyway, all of that, it's great. Um, it's not just about calling and asking questions and getting answers and feeling good. It's not. You've got to first kind of feel bad. We, get, we First, we got to cry a little bit or get angry. All right, something. You're going to have to get frustrated, angry, sad. you got to give me something, right? And we go give that to God, and then God goes, okay, <laughs> thank you. And then we move on. This is how you evolve and grow, and pretty soon... You just do this work automatically and autonomically. Also, I have a healing class coming up, so please join regularly on my Facebook page. Um, and, um, and and a lot of people who know me, they're like, yeah, it's coming up when, Abigail? <laughs> um, it's It truly is. Uh, what happens with me and with all of us, I get ahead of myself because you, I want to do so much. We all, a, a lot of us are still entertaining fear of failure. We're still being over-responsible, and so I get ahead of myself often often um what i do know is 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 i needed i i needed this win um and when i say win uh it's hard it's hard to get to a real place of acceptance where you know that all things are as 
they're supposed to be. It's hard to say it's a win when I don't know who won here. Um, nobody won. But I, I, I needed justice. Uh, I needed to see that that the words and the space that I that I'd been holding as what the world calls a, spy, a psychic. I needed, I needed to see that the fire I'd been asked to hold actually did something, brought some peace, and and actually made some change. So in that way, it's a win because there's going to be so many people that are going to turn to their psychic nature and start hearing God because of this story with Lorenzen Wright. And it's be, it'll be in his name. See, he gets, all those points still go to him. He's not dead. He's not dead. He is alive. We're the ones that are down here dead, you know, walking around not knowing our, being dead is being here in body and not knowing your power and authority in God, not, not knowing God's true presence and participation in your life psychically. Then it becomes magic. And it becomes magic, and so um, please keep joining. Um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna be live more 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 often uh, soon now. And as I said, I, I I needed this. I was down to to I, I didn't have anything left, and I, I just kept trying. I was like, I know I got to do these classes, but I didn't have anything. Um, many of you may know, and many of you may not know, but uh, the the soul expression of Prince, and I'll finish today with this Prince and Desmond Moore. Uh, the sole expression of Prince Rogers Nelson, uh, the rock star, formerly known as. Um, in heaven, they call him the magic man. He came to me. I, I didn't really know anything about him. I, I lost him after Purple Rain, you know, and hadn't watched the news in years. But uh, he came to me. And um, so many of you know, I've, I've been speaking a, a truth about him. He was murdered. He did not overdose. His sister Taika is the one who is who takes the primary burden. Interesting the parallel there because we've got wife Shara. It's funny how these women. Um, this is what I tell you. Me too. Go fuck off. Me too. Um, how about boys too? How about the boys too? All right. And then again, I'm saying it one more time, and everyone gets up in arms about Black Lives Matter, but you all go get fucking T-shirts with me too. Can we get our priorities straight? Can we all get real? But hurt women, just get the fuck off my page. Okay, that felt good. <sighs> we need to put them all in a camp, all right? Or like send them to Mars. Just, you know, send them to Mars for a while. Rehabilitation. Oh, woe is me. Shara is a butthurt woman. She's one of these Me Too fucking campaigners, and she was the abuser. Do you see? And then people are like, oh, I don't know if God likes Abigail's language. Really? At least I'm keeping it real, okay? <sighs> Why do I know Me Too's bullshit? Because I've been a therapist. And like, oh, like about 35, leaning on 40% of my clientele is men. That's almost unheard of. You know why? Because I keep it real and they know it. I'm not a butt hurt woman. And they're not going to have to go to some counselor and hear what they all say. Because I'm objective and fair. Most, the whole planet is under this fucking butt hurt woman illusion. See, Shara... Had, had a lot of people convinced that she was this poor abused woman and that Lorenzen got himself into this. He may, She literally says that he was dead way before he was shot because of his choices. I'm going to say, just like I said, that Big Bill <clears throat> would be from Mississippi, both shooters are, and that the gun would be found there and that a pearl-colored Cadillac Escalade would be found at a home in Mississippi, just like all that is true. Shara... I hope you, well, you're not watching today, are you? I hope someone gets this message to you. You are wearing an orange jumpsuit today, and sister, it feels good. Infinite love and gratitude. What's it taste like? Mmm, like a hot fudge frickin' Sunday. I'm enjoying this. All right, so with that said, the same way. The Billy Ray, BR, BR, and he's from Mississippi. There's a gun the same way I said that. Dennis McNeil, I doubt you're sleeping very well right now. You too, Kenny Brown. You're going down, motherfucker. Last person to see Lorenzen Wright was Kenny Brown. And you know, Shara, I watched you looking out the window. They show me what happened, Shara. I saw you watching him drive away knowing it was going to be the last time you saw Lorenzen. 
You're evil personified, Shara. You're evil personified. The reason you said you didn't know who he left with. You didn't know? You had six children with this man. You'd known him since he was barely 15 years old, Shara. You didn't know who he left with, but you told the police that he left with a box of drugs and cash. Are you for real? But you didn't know. Who are you leaving with? You ran his life. You had your head shoved so far up his ass. You knew everything he was doing. You had stalked him. You had hunted him. You know it. And his friends know what I'm saying right now is true. You know exactly who he left with. And you better start talking about Kenny Brown. Same person you met with at about 3 o'clock in the morning. Those were his clothes. You were burning in the backyard. Your neighbors saw you leaving your minivan. <sighs> You were the abusers. You got him involved in these drugs because you told him if he'd just do it and give you the cash, you'd leave him alone. And anyone who's got any judgment for Lorenzen Wright, I'll say it again. You keep your stones and your nuts in your own freaking pocket. Infinite love and gratitude. If you don't smoke pot or do an occasional line of coke, then for God's sakes, you do something. You're addicted to porn. You're drinking too much. You've got prescription meds in your fucking nightstand, but you do something we all do. You eat too many Twinkies then, for God's sakes, but can it? Take your judgment and jam it! All right, Lorenzen rate, and I'll finish with that today. So, so going back to that, this this is mm, one more place, and then I want to go to to who Lorenzen Wright really was. Shara, guess what? Your books mean shit. Who was the dumbass publisher for your books? You know what? Fuck you too. Infinite love. And all these people at the ministry, you tell me you're with God and you didn't know this bitch was a... Deep breath in. Infinite love and gratitude. We're going to change it. We were all meant to be psychic. We were all meant to hear God. This is revelation. And when everybody can hear it, no one can lie. Do you see what I'm saying? If those people in that church, it's not their fault. They don't know they're psychic. They don't know they can hear God. And it is by their beautiful hearts. I asked God, a daddy, I said, daddy, how do I get, how do I, how do I stop being mad about this? And in Jay's famous words, he's like, you know, they don't know what they don't know. They don't know. They don't know they can really hear God. And we all have beautiful hearts. And I know this because people say to me, Abigail, how can you just accuse people of murdering someone? I couldn't do it unless I knew it was true because I want to believe the best in people. We all do. We are inherently good. And that is why God loves us. So we all, people who know her, they don't want to believe. And they can't believe it because they wouldn't do it. So they think, oh, man. A mother with six, she has six of his babies. She wouldn't do this. We don't want to believe it. We are inherently good. And that's why God loves us to seem good. And the reason that God loves us is part of what's blocking us from really hearing the truth. That and you've got to be really brave, guys. You've got to be really brave. But guess what? We're going to come into a new world now where it's more accepted. Because guess what? They're going to find out Prince was poisoned and that his sister set this up. And that his chef, Ray Roberts, along with his wife, Jewel, have been poisoning Prince for months. That's why he was sick. And they put those drugs in his juice. And I've already provided proof. And FBI, I believe you are listening today. I will not stop. I'm going to Washington, D.C. next. And I've got more folks coming to meet. We've got our umbrellas ready. I've got bullhorns. And guess what, Mr. Wilson? I will not call you captain, you piece of shit. You know exactly what happened to Desmond Moore. And I will see you in Pascagoula soon. And guess what, Marco? That's who's responsible for Desmond's death. What happened is Desmond had a girlfriend. Look at this coincidence. As if there was such a thing, this synchronicity. <clears throat> Desmond had a, a girl that he'd been seeing for some time, a friend of his in, in Atlanta. But they were real close. They hadn't seen each other in a while. Well, Desmond also had a girlfriend out in Pascagoula area, oh, he started just, just communicating. This goes back to this fucking Me Too thing and these butt women. You need to knock it off, you vicious ass, scorned, horrible, jealous women. Knock it off, man. Look what you're doing. And then your Me Too campaign. Screw you guys. We need to worry about the men. 
These poor guys, they don't have a voice and they gotta put up with you guys for God's sakes. Infinite love and gratitude. Those, ah. so, so here's Desmond's girlfriend and she catches him texting. All he did was text a friend. And she gets mad and goes and tells her drug dealer brother what Desmond did to her. And then she shares some shit Desmond said about Marco. About how Marco was nothing but, you know, pussy, whatever. Marco's a pussy. Fuck Mar Marco. So because she's mad, thinks her boyfriend's cheating on her, she tells her drug addict brother, her drug dealing brother, this, 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 he has guns. This is what he does for a fucking living. To get back at Desmond. So what does Marco do? Sets Desmond up. Sets Desmond up. You know what's crazy? This guy, Marco, who's black, has two white boys running his drugs for him. <laughs> no one suspects the white boys. So we got a white cop who's not going to charge white boys. These white boys say Desmond never showed up at the pizza parlor. You're liars. You're liars. One of the boys is in the Air Force and the cops know his dad. Give a shit. Infinite love and gratitude. Desmond owed Marco about $700. They killed him for $700 because his girlfriend got mad and went and told on her drug dealer brother. I'm coming down there, Mr. Wilson. I'm just gonna, this case is just going to keep rolling. Uh, Justice for Prince is coming next, and then um, I, I just this is all I want to do. I want to spend my life making a difference, working on cases, um, and that's it. That's it. Um, and 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 assisting truth and coming to the surface. That's what I want to do. Um, so Desmond Moore, please hold space. I was really um, I was honored today. I called I called his mother D double D double D love. Um, this is a mother who loved you guys, man, loved her son and her, he, Desmond loved his mama. He took care of his mama and his, and his little siblings. He was a very talented rapper, very talented boy. And not only that, he was beautiful. I'm going to be putting his picture up and his mom has had to live with this. Not only the death of her son, but the fact that the police do nothing. They don't even return her phone calls. I got to call her today and just tell her there was a beautiful break in the Lorenzen case. And as always, I tell her, I, I can't do it. Only God brings justice. Only God brings justice. But I can yell loud and I'll be as brave as I can so that God can use that energy to make it happen. That's what we're going to do. And so I got to start out today. And I'll finish, I'll finish with this. Today is my mother's birthday. And I got up this morning and I was crying. She thought it was bad. I said, no, it's really good. Cher is in jail. I said, the bitch is in jail. And I said, mom, it's your birthday. She goes, I know. And I know Lorenzen did this for my birthday. <laughs> and so we are going out to dinner. I'm going out with my dear friend, Rita, who has been supporting me. I've been staying here with her at her place. And she's been supporting me in so many ways. So many ways as a friend. That was a sister giving me a, a place to rest for a while when we did the protest at, at Warner Brothers um, is really hard. That's all I can tell you. I was already at the end of my rope and I needed I needed this justice. So uh, now I'm ready to get back in the ring again. I feel like Ali getting back in with Frazier. <laughs> you know, like I'm ready. I'm ready to float like a butterfly, but I'm more ready to sting like a bee. So today, um, we're gonna we're gonna go celebrate um, my mama's birthday first and foremost because she has been on this ride with me. My mother, she we 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 fight like sisters, like a couple old Jewish ladies actually, but um, like Jewish sisters, <laughs> Jewish bubbies. <laughs> With that said, <laughs> um, with that said, she she also loves me unconditionally at the same time. You know, with God, both things are true. Um, and she's been on this ride with me. And there there are times she has. She, she thought I lost my damn mind. She thought I was crazy calling out police officers in Memphis, coming face to face with Dennis McNeil, meeting with Larry Godwin. My mom was just, she finally threw up her hands. And then lately, the last year and a half with Prince, she's just like, <laughs> she laughs sometimes and goes, what's next? I go, I don't know. God doesn't tell you what's next a lot. It's when everyone wants all the answers to everything. You don't always get them. They give you, heaven gives you information on a need to know basis is what they do. I said that one time I, I was looking perplexed and 
Jay asked me, like, what, what are you doing in your head? Like, why are you thinking so hard, Abigail? I said, easy for you to say. I have to explain shit to people, Jay, you know. And he, and he goes, oh, God, Abigail, so much drama, right? And I said, he said, well, what, what, what's got you perplexed now? And I said, how am I supposed to explain to people when it looks like you and Dad lie to us? And Jay started laughing, like, his crooked smile. And he goes, Abigail, you know, plain and simple, Dad and I do not lie to anybody. <laughs> Oh, I got to go back to the Baptist woman to finish tonight. And I started laughing. I said, well, I know that, but it looks like you do. And I have to explain that to people. And that's what he said to me. He said, tell them this. We give you information on a need to know basis. We tell you what you need to know when you need to know it and not before. He goes, and you just have to trust that giving you any more information than that is a bad idea. <laughs> and you'll see later that it was. And I, I, that I have learned. It's still, it's still hard still hard but we didn't come here to have a picnic if we wanted to have a picnic we would have stayed in heaven hanging out with dad and mama love and and big big j and the angels now i'll finish today with the baptist woman who in the middle of the session said to me D do you see jesus and the father as two separate people and 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 me being naive because i didn't understand I don't, I don't get all the rules in all these religions, nor do I really care. I just want to hear the truth from dad, which is why I know if you sit in a box, any box, and listen to all their rules and start trying to say, oh, because I'm a Pentecostal or I'm a, you know, Catholic or I'm a Baptist or I'm a, you know, whatever. Like, they all have separate rules. Then drop them. It's like you're not going to find God in a bunch of rules and you don't need 10% of your income for eternal freaking life, for God's sakes. You need faith. That's the only place of peace. You need to know where you're going when you die. All right. That's, that's what you know. You know you're loved by God. Um, so we thought, said she, I, I said, yes, I see him as both. And I saw this like look of horror come on her face just because they said they were, they, they were two separate people. Um, so I, I, going back to this, um, my understanding, you know, w would be this is, 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 I, I, you know, it's funny because now I'm like, oh, why am I there? All I want to say is, and that's that. <laughs> they are two separate people. Goodbye. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, you know, I guess G Jesus is the expression of God. He's, this is what I want to say. Thank you. Um, we, we, all, we all come here to attain Godhead. We all, we all come here to, to, to be what that envision is, to get as close to the light. And my understanding is the one known as Christ Yeshua. Yeshua was was the brightest of all star flecks to ever come to the planet and that he has attained more love the way father god explained it to me is is so he he is a truer reflection um of of the godhead of of of, of both mother and father of the creator that we came from than any other soul he is the highest ascended master the way it was explained to me is that christ yeshua known as jesus christ dad said to me um that he, he it, it, it angers God when, when people say, why Jesus? And he goes, would, would you ask Michael Phelps why he has five, I think now like seven, eight or whatever, gold medals? He goes, because he's a great swimmer. <laughs> I said, okay, dad. <laughs> and, and it's because, because Jesus was a great lover, the greatest lover of all times. He was able to find more love and capacity in his heart and especially in the times when people were barbaric to one another. We think it's bad now. Good God, they tell me all the time, we've come a long way, baby. And I go, shit, okay, whatever you say. You know, if God says we're doing good, I'll take it. I'll take it. Infinite love and gratitude. Um, so, so yes, they're, they're, they're not one in the same, um, but he sits the closest. And again, I don't, I don't know why I'm there today, but I guess someone watching may, may, maybe needed that. Maybe because what, what Jay said to me is, um, then, of course, we're all here to work with all the masters and learn from many masters and many teachers. But ultimately, you will have to walk with Jay and pass his tests. And those are the toughest. So when, when we get ready, we, we work with Jay and then, you know, and then we, we move on. And, and that's when we have the discernment um, to hear from, from Abba the Father in full of gratitude. So um, let's see. Finishing out with Lorenz and Wright again today. Just um, thanking God for justice um, I'm wishing, I, I wish that the peace, I have so much peace in my heart. I hope that that peace is like 10 gajillion fold more 
for his family and friends. I hope that just the piece of the piece that I feel in my heart, I hope it's just a small measure of what his mother and his sister and his family feel today and his children. I know that's going to be a, a hard one for them. And so I, I also uh, I would like everyone that's listening, if you feel called, please light a candle. Uh, thank God for the justice and please ask that he hold Lorenzen's children in his grace and in his comfort. I already know they're there, but let's just let's move more energy in that direction. Um, and I think that's where I'm going to stop today. I want to thank you guys for joining me. I will be back on taking calls in the future and I'll be back on um, talking about the case of Prince Rogers Nelson again. Um, and, and why the evidence um, has already been presented to prove his murder. And uh, we're going to keep pushing that forward as well. Um, also, uh, finishing that today, uh, we will still be doing what's uh, called the 1221 campaign, All We Want for Christmas, which is Justice for Prince. And um, I'll be on most likely uh, t tomorrow at some point. Uh, getting uh, to let you guys know how that's going to work, but we're going to be, I'll be on for 12 hours uh, live on 1221, uh, talking about uh, Prince, the case, being psychic, um, revelation, how this is going to affect the world. Um, I'll be taking calls, uh, but we'll be really focused on um, Prince's murder, um, the autopsy, why it's already been proven by facts and by psychic evidence that Prince was murdered. Um, and on 1221, during those 12 hours, we will be asking everyone to, to be calling the FBI who's involved in the case. The case is still open. Uh, Carver County Sheriff's Department, but more importantly, we're gonna be asking people to call President Donald Trump. We need his intervention in this case. And we're gonna be asking people to call Dr. Kevin Merigian. Um, he's, we're gonna, he's, he's the most qualified toxicologist, physician, doctor in, in, on the planet. To, to do this work and to prove the murder of Prince Rogers Nelson. We need President Trump's assistance because we need Dr. Merigian to have full access to the autopsy and to also be able to test the, uh, the samples, the hair, uh, tissue, and blood samples that they still have because the case is still open. We want that tested uh, for arsenic. Um, as, as, as well as uh, the bromelain, which I know is there because it was a juice that Ray Roberts made that night and he put the uh, liquid opiates in that killed Prince Rogers Nelson. Uh, so we're gonna be asking that uh, participation, uh, for that participation and phone calls. Um, all we want for Christmas is more justice. Uh, so I will see you guys soon. Um, again, I can't thank you guys enough for your support. Thank you, Memphis, for never forgetting Lorenz and Wright. Um, and it's my hope that the world finds out who Lorenzen really is. All right. And, uh, and we will have a campaign coming up as well. Please watch before Christmas um, so that we, I, I would like to, I'd like to send over um, a love gift and take donations um, for, for uh, Deborah, uh, Lorenzen's mother. Um, and uh, we'll talk more about that, but um I had one more piece I lost, so I'm going to go. It's time to go celebrate with my mom and with Rita. We're going to, as I said, celebrate her birthday and um, Lorenzen's justice uh, all in one big scoop. All right. Love you guys. Thank you for being here today. This has been Intuitive Heart Radio. Uh, I'm Abigail. And uh, I don't know, flow in love. Ooh, and this, this means I love you. Bye-bye.